What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to continue with the Interaction SDK, specifically with Ray Interactions Part 2, where we're going to be adding interactions to UIs by using the Ray Interactors that we had on the previous videos. I'm going to be showing you how we can set it up with the canvas, also what collider and plane surface we need to add. And I'm also going to show you a script that I already implemented, but I'm also going to be adding features to be able to add these components at runtime. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let's start with creating a new canvas. So I'm going to right click in here, go into UI, and we can just go ahead and click on canvas to create it. And then we just do go ahead and rename it. I'm going to call it scene options. Then it's going to tell you here that some values are driven by the canvas. I'm going to make it actually a canvas that is in world space because we're going to be dealing with it in VR. So this is way too large for that. And then I'm also going to be changing the position to be point, let's see, 1.05 on Y. And then on Z, I'm going to do point A to A. And let's go ahead and hit enter. Then on the width, we're going to make it very small. So I'm just going to do about 0.3744 which is what I did, and 0.5 on the height. So it's gonna be looking more like that. And then we're gonna have the big canvas debug area on the very back. So the next thing that I need to do though, is I'm gonna go ahead and we can collapse this. We don't need to look at any of those numbers. We're gonna be dragging and dropping this component in here, which is called scene options. And the reason why I did that is because they don't wanna have you sit and look at me adding all these UI components, because this is really not for that. This is more for the ray interactions part. So once you do that, we're going to be adding two new objects in here. The first one is going to be an empty. And this one, I'm just going to call it the collider. Then I'm also going to be adding another component in here, which is going to be just a plain surface. This one is going to be for the ray interaction uh, selector. And then this is just going to be the collider that it's going to be also required for the ray interactable. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and go into Collider here, and then I can create a, a Collider, which is going to use a Box Collider. It's going to be gigantic here. So we'll go here into 2D, and then if you hit the Edit Collider, we're going to get the handles here, and we can just go ahead and resize it here. And then the next thing that I need to do here is I'm going to be a Collider surface, and we can just drag and drop the Collider. Then if we go to the plane surfer, there's actually going to be a component called that. So if we do plane surface, you're going to see that now we, have, we get this huge grid. And this is going to allow us to set up the ray interactable. You can set it whether you want it to be backwards or forward. So I'm just going to do, or double sided. I'm just going to leave it as default. I'm going to go ahead and go into the event system here. And I normally like to have that one to be the last. I'm going to be removing the standalone input module because this is not going to be a standalone. Uh, application is going to be a VR, and specifically with the interaction SDK. So we need to go ahead and add what's called the pointable canvas module. And what this is going to do is going to allow us to basically talk to the canvas. We're going to be able to send uh, different actions to the canvas by using the ray. So no normally, if you're dealing with anything pointable, which there is an eye pointable component that you want to add that to the actual event system. So that's going to be that. Then if we go into the scene options, now what we can do is we can add a bunch of components that we're going to need. The first one is going to be the pointable canvas. And if you go in here and it's going to be the first one and extend it, this is going to require that we specify a canvas. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag it and drop it. If you want to forward this to another element, you can do that. Or if you want to transfer on selection, add new points to front. I haven't really dealt with any of that. I'm just going to leave it as default. But just know that those are options available in there. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Array Interactable. Let's go ahead and expand it because I need to see more of it. And it's going to require that we have a pointable element. Well, pointable element is going to be this. Let me go ahead and collapse that. The surface, though, is going to be the one that we just created, which is going to be the actual collider. So let's drag it and drop it. Select surface is going to be my plane surface. And then we're not dealing with movement, so we don't need to do that. And then, you know, you don't have to do any filters or max interactors, at least for this case, because this is going to work as it is. The next thing that you need to do, though, is we're going to be adding more information so that we can see it for debugging purposes. So we can add what's called a pointable debug gizmos, just to pointable 
the boss gizmos. And then it's also going to require that you specify a pointable. So I'm just gonna do the pointable canvas, so drag it and drop it. I'm gonna leave it as this. It's gonna give us more information when we're debugging. It's actually gonna draw the axis, which is really cool. And you can also change the colors based on hover or select. And then lastly, I'm gonna collapse this. I'm going to do the pointable Unity event wrapper. You can also do this one if you like. The one that I'm gonna be adding is going to be this one. And then again, it's gonna take a pointable component, which is gonna be my canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop a UI manager here, which is a script that I already implemented. It's really not too into the ray interactions, but we're gonna be able to select whether we want to add dynamic ray interactables on runtime, meaning through the code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop the canvas here. I also need to specify a couple different objects in here. So let me create an empty and I'll show you and explain to you why we need this. So this one is actually going to be 3D objects and I'm going to be placing these at zero, and then I think I did 1.5, and then 0 0.5. The reason why I did that is because there's gonna be objects in here that are falling, and we're gonna be able to select whether we want to add a cube, whether we want to add a sphere, whether we want that to be and have a random color, or if you want to include an interactable, and then this UI mode is going to allow you to basically place the UI in different places in this table, or also put it on the error, which is, you know, the default state. So what I need to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this component here where we're gonna be creating all the different objects. And I also need to specify a status here, which is this status right here. And then we need to bind some of these other UI components. So what I'm gonna do here on the status, I'm gonna associate that with this. The random color, this is just so that we can designate if we want it to be random or not. And then also if I want to include Ray Interactables, I'm going to also be specifying that in there. The other thing that I have in here, the floating UI on table UI, these are just different locations and I created a scriptable object to be able to specify the position of the UI. And it basically has a position, which is a vector tree and a rotation, which is a quaternion. So basically a very simple object, which I'll show you as well. So if we go into the race demo UI manager, I need to add a couple more things to be able to specify whether we're going to be adding a surface uh, array interactable on with a collider surface and basically all the components that we'll need to make that an object that we can interact with rays. So this is pretty simple. We have a canvas, we have different settings and then you know a toggle link here and then the object that we're going to be creating the objects under and then a status. And then you can look at this code and get help. I'm not going to go through that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, if I have the include ray interactable on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be adding the components that we need. So I'm just gonna do collider surface. And then we can just say new, new geo, because at this point here, I'm creating a primitive. So I have access to that. And then I'm just gonna say a component. And remember, we did this manually at the beginning of the video. So the first thing that we need in order for us to interact with a 3D object is a collider surface. So that's what I'm doing here at runtime. And then I'm also going to be doing basically injecting the collider. So we need to inject the collider that I already have on this component. So I'm just gonna say new geo, and then we can just get the component and then we can just say collider. And then that's gonna give us the collider that we need because when we're creating a primitive by default, it adds a collider automatically. We don't need to tell it to do it. It also adds a rigid body, which we are explicitly telling the system to do. And then what I'm gonna do is I need to also add interactable. That way we can actually interact with it with array. So basically we won't be able to interact with it, but we can have the array actually collide with it, which is the default behavior of array interactable. And then I'll just do this. And then the last thing that I need to do though, is I need to go ahead and associate the surface. So I'm just gonna say inject surface, and then we're going to be injecting the collider surface in here. So we got both hands currently rendering. I can see the left right interactor, also right interactor, or hover events are getting triggered correctly. You can also do selections here and you can see that the canvas shows that. I also have a couple of different options in here on the scene options. I'm gonna put it right on the table. You can put that right on the table here. How about on the left side? Or perhaps let's put it right on the right side. 
And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it back into floating mode. That way we have it in front of us. I also can select whether I want a cube or if I wanted to do a sphere, I can do that. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this and you can see how precise that is. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new cube. You can see the cube is now getting added. What if I wanted to do a sphere? We can try a sphere here and then do maybe a couple of spheres in here. So we go a little crazy. What about some different colors so that we have more colorful interactions? And I can do, let's go ahead and do more blocks so that we don't have, we have them stain in there. Let's see if I can do more so we have it bouncing down. And then what I can also do though, let's say that we add a couple more of those. You can see how this is now blocking the actual ray because there's really not a ray interactor. But if I were to go ahead and check that and now enable it, you're gonna see that some of the cubes are going to have the actual block because one of them has the ray interactable, the other one doesn't. And I can also do that with the spheres. So I can go in here and then just add a bunch of spheres. And you can see that some of them do have like that one right there. It's going away, it's going away, and then basically drops out. But they do block because there's actually, you know, the collider on them and the collider surface is actually taking that into account. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about ray interactions, either with 3D objects, which is what I did a previous video on and a link right above it. Or if you wanna know more about ray interaction, things that I didn't cover, let me know below. But just know that I'm gonna be making a lot more videos on using the interaction SDK. So there's a lot more features coming. And again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because that's going to allow me to bring you a lot more videos. Thank you guys.